Today I have eight predictions of where AI is going to be going in the year 2024. Now, of course, because this is my channel, The Nerdy Novelist, we are going from the perspective of authors here, which means my focus is mostly on the writing space and for fiction writing in particular. But I do have a few other predictions that I think will impact authors in a way, but don't necessarily deal directly with large language models or anything like that. With that said, I did save my favorite for last, so be sure to stick around to the end for that. All right, so first off, my first prediction is that the AI haters, while I don't think AI hate is going to go away, there are still gonna be artists and writers who really have an issue with all of these new AI tools, and I don't think that's gonna go away for a very long time. But I do think that it's going to be an increasingly difficult position to maintain. And the reason I say that is because there are so many benefits to AI. We're seeing major breakthroughs in medicine right now with like new antibiotics being developed and things like that. Really cool stuff. We're seeing improvements in virtually every one of the arts. We're seeing improvements in coding. We're seeing improvements pretty much everywhere. At some point, all of these improvements are going to be so widespread that even if an anti-AI person is against AI in one area, chances are, in fact, this is already the case, but chances are they're going to realize that they're, they are using AI in other areas and that you can't have the AI that they're okay with without having the AI that they are not okay with. And you can't have the advancements in medical technology without all of these advancements in large language models and everything else. They kind of just all go together as one big push of technology. And so it's going to become increasingly difficult for anyone to maintain a stance against AI because it's going to become so widespread and so beneficial in every area of life that it's just going to be a hard stance to maintain. My second prediction, and this one's a fun one for me because I've talked before about storytelling and how I'm really, I consider myself a storyteller more than just a simple author because I want to tell stories. I don't care what the medium is in right? It could be a book, it could be a film. And one of the areas with AI that I'm really excited about right now is AI video and AI gaming. Some of these things are, are really looking really interesting, but so far both of them have not really reached the level that we've seen AI art and AI writing come in 2023. So I think 2024 is really going to be the year for both of those where it becomes so easy for anyone to just make their own video game. My favorite genre of video game is open world RPGs. And I just think it would be so cool to go into a tool like Unreal Engine 5 and just to create my world and do it relatively easily. And then from there, I could either just explore the world however I want, or I could add my own non-playable characters. I could create a game that's set in my world. I could program NPCs to talk using a large language model as their personality engine which would make it so that I could interact with those characters like, you know, like they were coming out alive from my books. I just think there's so many cool things there that will be publicly available uh, and relatively accessible in the next year or two. And so I know while that's not as relevant to this channel in terms of learning to write with AI, it is something I'm very interested in pursuing a little bit. It is like creating that world inside of Unreal Engine or any other t tool where I can utilize AI to create some shortcuts along the way and just create these immersive storytelling experiences that weren't possible before. So I think that'll be really cool. My third prediction is, of course, that we're going to get GPT-5 and Claude 3. GPT-4 and Claude 2 have been kind of the reigning kings at the large language model battle that's going on right now. They're at the forefront of everything, and I think it, we're almost due to see major improvements to both. We've already seen a Claude 2.1, and there have been rumors of a GPT 4.5, but I think for sure we're going to see GPT 5 and Claude 3 at some point in 2024. Now, here's the kicker, though. I do think that even though we will see these large language models, I don't necessarily think that that will be a good thing for authors. Authors were interested in creativity and in creating stories out of the language. What most of the people using the AI language models, what they are most concerned about is accuracy, is not hallucinating a lot. You know, they're thinking about law and medicine 
and all of these other applications where you want it to be pretty exact and to have guardrails up so that it doesn't deviate from what is accurate, right? And that's a big issue that they're working with. They're, they don't care so much about you and me, um, which is why when we saw Claude 2.1 come out, it was actually worse for creative writers than Claude 2.0 because they had put a lot of these guardrails in place to make it more accurate for non-writers. Now, there is a solution to this that I'll get to as my final prediction, but I do think that we shouldn't expect GPT-5 or Claude 3 to be the huge breakthrough that we want it to be in terms of being able to write creatively. However, I do think we'll see improvements in all of these models over time, so we'll just see how that goes. Which actually leads me to my fourth prediction, which is that all of the open source models that we have out there, it's, there's a lot of them, there's Mythomax, there's Mistral, there's, there's a lot of different options out there. I think we will see those, and in fact, Mistral has actually come out and said that there's going to be a GPT-4 level version of their model coming out in 2024. And so I think we will see the open source models following closely behind the larger models, which right now means they're almost to the point where they're useful for creative writing. They're certainly useful in certain situations, like if you want to write not safe for work content. But if you're not doing that, they're, you know, usually people still default to Claude 2 or GPT-4 for their text writing. And I think we'll get to the point where the open source models are good enough that you don't necessarily need to use any of the GPT or Claude models. I don't think they're going to exceed the GPT and Claude models because I think those models are always going to be a little bit of a step ahead because they have all of this financial backing behind them. You always watch where the money is going because that's where the innovation happens. But I do think that they will follow very closely and eventually will be good enough that it doesn't matter so much which model you use. Now, my fifth prediction is a little bit more of a doom and gloom prediction, and I'm not usually the kind of guy to have these kind of predictions, but I do think that the uh, USA elections in the year 2024 are going to be a bit of a hot mess not just because of the people that are running, but also just because of the way AI has entered into our society right now. I think we're going to see AI used in a lot of unethical ways to try and sway the election in one way or another. Now you might ask, what does this have to do with writing? Not much, but only in the sense that I feel like this is going to start getting national attention because AI is going to be used in all of the ways that we don't want it to be used, all of the unethical ways that we don't want AI to, to be used for. We're going to start seeing that ugly side of things, ugly side of humanity for the people that are using AI start to come out in the election. And what that might lead to is some more laws or other things on the other side of the election to try and deal with these issues more in the future. We're already seeing Google and YouTube and other platforms start to preemptively think about this. Both of them have talked, have started to clamp down on certain types of AI generated content because of the potential to mislead people in the elections. But I think it's just inevitable. We're going to be seeing it used in all the wrong ways. And that will throw things into chaos a little bit, as well as probably provide some incentive for people to enact some law, put even heavier guardrails on these tools in 2025. Now, number six is my prediction that we're going to see a lot more lawsuits kind of going along with this last one. We're going to see a lot of things pop up, a lot of issues that people have. They're going to make their way into a court of law somewhere. Now, I don't think any of these things are going to have any really long lasting consequences. I mean, you just look at the open source models right now, like there's just no way to stop the flood of AI that is happening right now. And so I think we need to figure out a better way to deal with it. But I do think we're going to see a lot more lawsuits like the one the New York Times just levied against open AI. But even if the New York Times wins that lawsuit, or if other people win their lawsuits, it's not going to stop the influx of AI. Somebody is going to figure out how to legally train these models in a way that does the exact same things that they're doing now. But we will probably start to see some more definitive laws or rulings that say it's okay to train a model in this way, it's not okay to train a model in this other way, and start to get a little bit more clarity on what is or is not okay. Whether the laws will be 
correct is going to be somewhat subjective because there are so many intelligent people debating these things already. But I do think that we are going to start to see some more definitive answers in 2024. Now that we're done with the sort of doom and gloom side of things, I want to talk about a few more predictions that I think are going to be a lot more positive. The seventh one that I have is that Apple is going to start getting into the AI game a little bit more. Apple's been surprisingly quiet when it comes to AI. And a lot of people are thinking like they have their own strategy. They're doing things their own way. A lot of people are thinking that Apple was really taken by surprise by AI. I tend to think the latter because I think most people were taken by surprise with AI. And based on what I've read and just my own intuition, I don't think Apple is planning on aggressively pursuing AI in the same way that Google or Microsoft are doing, where they're creating their these enormous large language models in order to compete. But I do think that they're going to be very concerned about integrating their own version of AI into their line of Apple products. So basically in such a way that enhancing Siri, creating a Siri like 10.0, right? Something that's way better than what Siri was able to do before in a way that is extremely useful, but could actually run on your smartphone and doesn't need to be you know, connected to these hugely powerful servers or anything like that. So I think we will start to see a lot more integration with the Apple line of products, but also with smart products in general, I think we've already known about some new AI models that are coming on to the Google Pixel and other Android dev devices that we'll see using Google's large language models. And I'll say, I think we'll see a lot of more of that in the future, probably spearheaded by Apple, or at the very least, Apple is going to take what other people have done and make it way better because that is sort of the thing that they do. All right, time for my favorite prediction of the year. And this one might just be a favorite for me personally. I don't know how many of you are as excited about it as I am, but I actually talked to one of the members of my community, Corey, uh, who's a moderator at my Discord, which you can find a link to below. And he actually showed me an example of GPT 3.5 written prose that he had generated. He had not edited the prose at all. And it was awesome. It was so much better than anything I'd ever read straight out of a large language model. And the way he was able to do that was because he had fine-tuned the GPT 3.5 model on his writing. And I think that this is going to be a huge game changer coming into 2024. We already, it's already possible. Anybody who has the technical skills can go and fine tune the GPT 3.5 model, but it is an incredibly complicated process. I'm still figuring it out. That tells you how complicated it is. You know, I'm not much of a tech person, but if I want to figure something out, I will work at it until I figure it out. And I haven't figured it out yet. But for those who have, there are some really cool ways to create far better creative writers out of the base models. And I do think when I said that the GPT-5 and the Claude 3s that are coming out hopefully sometime this year, when I said that they aren't going to be as good as what we have now for creative writing, that was just speaking of the general model. I do think that it will become much easier at some point in 2024 to create these fine-tuned models ourselves and that those models will be far better at creative writing than any of the other models, and they'll be the ones that we want to default to all the time. Right now, we really only have the ability to fine-tune GPT 3.5, but I think fine-tuning GPT 4 is not far behind, and I think fine-tuning other models will not be far behind that. But most importantly, I think we need to have some sort of interface to make fine-tuning a little bit easier, and I think that is what is going to be coming very probably very soon, uh, within 2024. Now, there are already a, tool, a few tools out there that are trying to do this, most notably Rexy. If you're using Rexy in Future Fiction Academy, they have some tools in there to actually help, help you create your own fine-tuned model. But even with the interface that they have, it's still a very complicated process. There's still a specific way that you need to do it. And so it's not necessarily easy even with those tools. And I do think that OpenAI will have their own ways of making it a little bit easier and maybe we'll see something from Claude or Google or one of the open source models that makes it a whole lot easier to do. And once we start to see that, things are gonna take off and it's gonna be so much easier for authors to use any of these tools. And I will say, if anyone from Pseudorite 
or novel crafter or any of these other writing tools are listening i will i would recommend that you keep this in mind pseudo write in particular you can only use the ai models that they give you but if you have a way to fine tune your own model or if you already have a fine tuned model that you've already generated then there's no way to use that fine-tuned model inside of Pseudorite. And so what I would suggest to Pseudorite is to, first of all, find a way to do that. Find a way for anybody who has their own fine-tuned model to be able to use it inside of Pseudorite. Or have your own way to create fine-tuned models within Pseudorite. That would be my biggest suggestion to them if they or anybody on their team uh, are listening to this, uh, which I knew, I knew they do because <laughs> I've, I've seen, I've talked to them about it. So hopefully, hopefully that does become the case. If you're using Novel Crafter, you can hook it up to OpenAI's a API, which means that you should be able to have access to any of your fine-tuned models that you created in OpenAI should be accessible through Novel Crafter. But again, this is all a very complicated process. It's not an easy thing to set up a fine-tuned model. And I do think that making that process easier is going to be so much better for AI in the future. And I do think we'll see that in 2024. Those are my predictions. I'll see you in the next video.